Welcome. We have a vector A that has magnitude of 4, 3, and we want to start doing scalar math with this. We've done a little bit with forces in previous semesters, but we really have a lot of two-dimensional and three-dimensional math in this semester, so we want to go over a way to do this. One thing we can do is we always can say that right, that this vector A is the sum of two separate vectors. So I could write one vector and another vector that are apart by 90 degrees. And I can call this a x vector and a y vector. What's nice about a x vector is that it's entirely in one direction. I can say that a x vector is 4 in the to the right direction. For my a y vector, I can say it is 3 in to the up direction, or something of that sort. So that's nice, and it feels like, right, these four cardinal directions, we might want to use a whole lot. So let's use a new convention where, when we're talking about vectors like these that are entirely in one direction, we don't have to use all of this verbiage. That every time I write plus i hat, I mean in the positive x direction. Every time I say negative i hat, I mean in the negative x direction, plus j hat in the positive y direction, and minus j hat is in the negative y direction. And in fact, other courses, other ways, might use a slightly different convention, where instead of i hat, they use plus x hat. So this would be negative x hat, and then this would be plus y hat. This would be negative y hat. For this course and a lot of other physicists, there's going to use i hats and j hats, just so we're not confusing our variables x and y with directions. So this new convention means that my ax vector could just be written as 4i hat, and my a y vector could be just written as 3j hat. What's cool about this is that now that I can treat this like a mathematical algebraic variable, and I am multiplying it by a magnitude. We can see pretty quickly that the magnitude of a x is 4. We can see pretty quickly that the magnitude of a y is 3. And then we can go back and we can say, that my a vector is equal to a x vector plus a y vector. So I can write it as 4 i hat plus 3 j hat. This is looking great. What if I wanted to find the direction of a vector? Well, I know, right, that I have this thing that I can write that a x vector is equal to the magnitude of a x times i hat, that a y vector is equal to the magnitude of a y times j hat. So I can say this is the magnitude of a x times a sub x hat, the unit vector of a sub x, a sub y, a sub y hat. And this is just a case where, right, a sub x hat is exactly equal to i hat, a sub y hat is exactly equal to j hat. Well, then my a vector. I can write as the magnitude of a times a hat. Well, I know a lot about this, right? I can also find a hat to say that it is the a vector over the magnitude of a. In fact, for any vector, We can write r vector as the magnitude of r times r hat, which means we can write r hat as r vector over the magnitude of r. So if I'm doing this, I can find a hat. I know what a vector is. It's 4i hat plus 3j hat. I know what the magnitude of a is, is because I can do Pythagorean theorem. I can take the square root of the individual components, 4 squared 
plus 3 squared. So 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, so that gives me 25. Square root of 25 gives me 5. So I can get that a hat is equal to 4 i hat plus 3j hat over 5. So in fact, for any vector, my r vector I can just write as the r in the x direction times i hat plus r in the y direction times j hat, exactly over this ax plus ay. And so then my r hat, I can write as rx i hat plus ry j hat over the magnitude of r, which is the square root of rx squared plus ry squared. So we have this new convention of unit vectors. And for any vector, we can find its unit vector by first finding the vector and then finding the magnitude and dividing the vector by its magnitude.